Over to you, Mark. Give it 10 seconds and all yours. Thank you. Evening, everybody. Um, just a reminder, the broadcast section is going to be embargoed till eight o'clock tonight. Um, and we'll start, please, with Rob from Arsenal Digital. Hi, Mikel. Um, we've just, just seen some good news on Bernd Leno. It wasn't looking too positive after the game at Brighton, but we've just announced it'll be four to six weeks. What's your reaction to that? Well, we thought it was going to be a more significant injury. We don't know the extent of the injury still, but we know that at least the, um, the crucial ligaments are not damaged. It was the biggest fear at the start. And uh, he was more positive and in less pain today, so so that's a good news. Also, further good news on Socrates, Granit Xhaka. We hear that they could be back in contention for the game at Southampton. That's pretty good news, especially considering some of the other other problems you've had. Well, we don't know yet. They haven't trained fully with the team. Um, let's see how they are tomorrow. They can involve in any way in the squad, but um, but they are not yet um, ready. And just lastly from me, it's another tough trip to the South Coast to take on Southampton. How much did you see of their game at Norwich and what do you think their strengths are? Yes, uh, a very German side. Um, a manager, I think, that um, has the team into pressing mode. They are really aggressive. They are really good on the counter press. They are really good in transition. They know what they're doing. They all seem very, very committed to him. And, uh, yeah, a very dangerous team. Great. Thanks, Mikel. Next, can we go to Aidan McGee from Sky? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Hi, Mikel. Good evening to you. Uh, two defeats, a lot of problems around the team in those first two games as well. Are you getting a sense for just how big a job you'll have turning this team around in the next... However long you're in the job? I knew that the challenge was going to be big, uh, but to be fair, a lot of things had happened um, since I joined. Um, this is what we have. Um, a lot of complication in the last few weeks, um, internally, in terms of injuries as well. But we have to deal with this. Um, I think the most difficult thing to buy in football is time. I strongly believe in um, what we are trying to do. Uh, medium term, I know that it's going to work, but right now we need results and uh, and we need to perform to win football matches and that's what we have to be focusing on. Sky Sports pundit Gary Neville said that you need an entire overhaul of your defence and some ice-cold defenders, in his words. Now, he's a multiple Premier League winner, he's won the Champions League. Do you agree with his assessment, at least to some extent? Yeah, but at the moment we cannot do anything. At the moment we are playing with the players that we have. My job is to make them as good as possible. They are players that have clip, um, a lot of clean sheets under me, that they've been undefeated for 12 games and uh, and they've done really, really well. So I don't like to judge players just uh, when they lose, but I know overall where can we strengthen the team. But as well that we have some players that they are very valuable, that they've been performing under me really, really well, that I trust them. Just want to ask about Matteo Guendouzi finally for me as well. He avoided an FA punishment yesterday for what happened at the end of the Brighton game. But as a manager, have you had to, or will you have to, remind him of his uh, duty as a professional in terms of his conduct? Yeah, my my job is to to make sure that that we all behave in relation to the shirt that we wear. Obviously, what happens on the pitch, I play for seventeen years and it stays on the pitch because you can mold and change in words and context very easily and you shouldn't be doing that at all. But obviously we show frustration. So in a way I like because that means that uh, we care about losing and we don't accept any defeats. But I like those type of reaction earlier instead of um, after the football games. Thank you. Uh, can I bring in Adam Cotier from P Premier League, please? Hi, Mikel. Hello. Um, what more do you want to see from your team in the match on Thursday? I think they are really willing, that they are trying really hard. And I was really upset because when I was talking about competing, is for 100 minutes now the type of games are 
now digest it with, with the water breaks and the amount of changes that substitution you are able to make, that you have to keep that focus. And um, I hate losing, but I hate giving games away when they are under control and, and you deserve to win them. So it's about that edge, the way they run, the way they press, the way they care. It's completely changed, and um, and I am satisfied with that. And we've done more than enough to win that football game. But at the end of the day, in the Premier League at this level, you give something to the opponent in some moments. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to game to win football games in a row. Do you think the team has got what it takes to finish in the top four of this season? We will see the reaction now. So when you are winning two, three games in a row, it's easy. When you lose one, it becomes a little bit more difficult. When you lose. Two in a row, two very different games, completely different to assess. I want to see that reaction and how much um, they want it, how they're going to react as a team as well, as individuals, and go for it. How do you assess the confidence in the squad at the moment? It's not about the confidence. I was about being upset. And when you know that it's been your fault um, to lose the game, um, I think it hurts much more. Um, I see the players willing to get back on Thursday and, and transform this into a win. And everything will be looking much, much better. But um, at the same time, you know, uh, as a group, we have to be dealing with this situation throughout the season. You're going to lose one or two games on the track. Okay, How do you react? And just finally from me, Mikel, um, Emi Martinez is going to have a big role to play. He's been at the club a, a long time. It's a big step up for him now, isn't it? A big, important role for him to, to play in the remainder of the season or how long? Yeah, he's, out very, from. he's been very patient uh, for a lot of years waiting for this opportunity. Now he's his in hand. Um, he needs to enjoy it. He needs to take it, enjoy it, make the most out of it and help the team when he really needs it. That's why he's fearful. Thanks, Mikel. Thank you. Uh, Ian Abrahams, TalkSport. Hi, Mikael. How are you? Hi, Ian. Um, I was at the game earlier in the season at the Emirates between Arsenal and Southampton, and, and Southampton were really good. I mean, they were really impressive that day. And Danny Ings obviously scored a lot of goals from this season. This is another difficult task for you, isn't it, considering you haven't yet got a point since the restart? I know. It's a really difficult ground to go there. And uh, I explained what the, the qualities of Southampton are. I agree with you. They are a really dangerous team. Um, they have no fear. They go for it. They really believe in what they do. And, uh, and they compete really, really well. So we have to be ready. And I'm sure on Thursday we will be ready. How much are you now going to use the rest of this season to outline what you think Arsenal are going to look like going forward? Because obviously they used to have really strong defenders like David O'Leary and Tony Adams. And they used to have really strong midfielders like Patrick Vieira. And the feeling is that Arsenal haven't got those sort of players anymore. I knew right. since I joined where I was jumping in, you know, and the past few seasons, what happens? And I knew it wasn't a coincidence. Um, so I could have sit back and wait if the opportunity was still in the summer. Or I can use this time as well to start the process I want and to start to see where the changes that have to be made. Uh, a lot of things have already changed at the club and are in evolution to change. Even results and, and energy was changing just before the coronavirus. I cannot control everything. Now I don't have them in my hands for as long as I want during the day because they are in and out, in and out. And all, that obviously is not ideal for what we need as a, as a team and as a club. But again, it's not an excuse. We are here to win football games. That's my responsibility. I take full of it. But uh, we are assessing a lot of things to make a very clear picture of what is going to take us to the next level, because right now it's not enough. Well, off the back of that, finally, I mean, you, you obviously had the coronavirus. Um, today, the lockdown restrictions eased even further. Are you hoping that when we come back for the, the new season in September or whenever the new season will start, maybe there'll be slightly less restrictions, you'll be able to work more with your players? Well, hopefully, yeah, we can provide them a safe environment, which is the most important thing. Of course, we are willing, not myself, but all the managers and clubs in the world. It's the same with, with the fans, how different the games are. And, and you notice this in the rhythm and how you're competing, the quality of the game. It's, it's miles away from what it was to. But um, we are living a unique situation and um, it's what we have. Thanks, Mikael. Thank you. 
Uh, next, Nick Callow from Haters. Evening, Mikel. Um, I was speaking to a couple of Arsenal fans earlier today and I said, what would you ask him in a press conference? And they said, where's Gabby Martinelli? And I'm reading since then that he's injured. What is the situation with him? Yeah, we had some really bad news again yesterday. Um, in training, in the last action, he got hit by another player and he's damaged his knee. The doctor says in uh, the extent of the injury, but uh, he's not looking good at all. How, how long do you think he'll be out for? I mean, was he close to being in your plans for playing? We don't know, but he's looking months. This is a really bad run of injuries, isn't it? Is there anything you can put that down to? Well, if the two players bang each other or if, if what happened with Pablo on his own and, and I love that we have in recent months, they are not muscular injuries, they are more traumatic injuries. But um, yeah, again, we've been really unlucky with that and um, we have to deal with it. Um, away from the pitch, I presume this is a bit of a busy day, a bit like transfer deadline day, because by my reckoning, by tonight, you have to make decisions or secure deals with David Luiz, Mari, Cedric and Danny Ceballos. What's the latest on that situation, those situations? Yes, it's very complicated, the timing of it and, and some of the legal issues that are involved with that. The club um, is trying to finalise everything in the next uh, few hours. We have no choice, we have to do it and even more with the injuries that we had, so we are trying to resolve this. Are you confident you'll have all of those players at your disposal, or do you think you'll have to do without one or two of them? No, I'm confident that uh, we can do it. I hope so. You can do the deals. Can I just, ask, uh, just one final question. I remember the day you were appointed, some of us were lucky enough to go up to the director's lounge with Raul Sanlehi and sort of lay out targets for your situation. At the time, the club was probably closer to the relegation zone than the top four place, but Raul said, we're going for top four. Now, looking at other sort of big clubs, Liverpool and Chelsea really did well when they had a season out of Europe. Have you mm -hmm. considered that it could almost be a benefit if next season you've got no European football to distract you? I don't know. Uh, I'm telling you that I'm going to try to win the rest of the games, that's for sure, and not look uh, more far behind than that. Um, we have some examples there that he held them in difficult situations when they were involved with the clubs, but uh, it doesn't give you any guarantees. I want to win football games, I want to play in Europe next year. This is what this club has to be doing and it's our responsibility to try to do that. Cheers, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. A uh, couple from Charles Watts at Goal. Hi, Mikhail, how are you? Hello. Um, just on the deals you were just talking about there, can you just confirm with whether um, Pablo Mari, is that... Flamengo have said that deal is done and he's going to permanently be an Arsenal player. Can you just talk a little bit about that and say whether or not that's true or not um, and, and how that deal's happened? Well, we've been trying to get the deal done because uh, we were happy with what Pablo can bring to us. Um, and the club were trying to finalise the deal. Uh, I think the club will announce that as quick as possible when, when everything is sorted. There were some legal issues there as well to get done, but our intention clearly is to keep him. And that's for, you know, an actual permanent transfer. Yeah. Um, and on um, sort of financial issues, you've talked about this last last week, have maybe been making getting these deals over the line quite difficult because of all the uncertainty. Can I just ask, what hope have you got for the summer? We hear about like Thomas Party all the time, 50 million. Is is a deal like that even possible for us? Or is that is that you know, sort of dreamland, really. <laughs> At the moment, uh, just to predict what's going to happen in the transfer window, I think it's impossible. Uh, you've seen one or two clubs doing any sort of deals, but the rest is really, really quiet. As I told you, we have to assess the, the financial situation that uh, we had, as well the results and where we finish in the season will dictate whether we have a, a very narrow gap or a bigger gap to do any any deals so i think we're going to have to wait another four to six weeks to see what we are able to do and just lastly on, on cedric um we hear that might well be a, a something you're hoping to turn permanent as well is that is that the plan with him well it was the plan um, from the start he's been again so so unlucky he was injured when he joined then he had a fracture in his nose he hasn't played at all um for us, but uh, again, we think that it's a player that uh, will improve and will help the squad's depth 
and uh, hopefully we can do it as well. Thank you, Mikhail. Thank you. Thanks, Charles.